short story by Paul McCann called Bridal Talk. Susie was one of the quietest girls in school. She didn't have a lot of friends, but the ones she did have were genuine. Her hair was short and her skin was fair, and Susie was small for her age. Her figure was slim and her smile could win you over in a second. Most people saw her as friendly and intelligent. There was something else about Susie that was intriguing. She had a mystery charisma around her, something she kept secretly hidden away from others. She wasn't what you'd call a genius or one of the brightest sparks in the class, but she did love agriculture. Apart from that, she never liked any other subject at school. Each day in the classroom, the minutes passed like hours, and recess time seemed years apart with no hope of an escape. The demanding of understanding algebra had not been one of her priorities, and composing three-minute monologues were usually something she would make up on the spot for the casual English teacher who drifted in and out every week like a landlord's chasing rent money. The only thing Susie cared about was horses. They had been the love of her life ever since she could walk. Her dad put her in the saddle when she was only knee-high, and before they lost the farm to the drought, Susie rode horses around the large property until daylight would disappear. Every now and then, when she sat in class, she wanted to run away from school and catch the bus to the only place where she really felt at home, at the back of Fancy Shoe Racetrack, for that's where she worked every day after school. Susie cleaned out the stables, hosed down horses, brushed their coats, plated their tails, and when no one was around, she would jump up and ride bareback her favourite horse, Jack, otherwise known as Tic Tac, one of the country's best two-year-old sprinters. Sometimes in life, things are meant to happen, call it fate, destiny, or just by chance. Either way, Susie was meant to become a star on the track. Finally, the school bell rang, and it was time to vacate the school for another day. Susie put away her Monday-itis feeling into her school haversack and caught the bus outside school that would drop her off near Fancy Shoe Racetrack. She quickly made her way through the empty car park and over to the entrance where she hurtled over the turnstiles and made her way down to the horse stables where a small number of thoroughbred horses were waiting. Susie went into the tack room where she got out her school uniform and she got into her work clothes and boots. Once she was dressed and ready for work, she emerged a different person, transformed almost. Confidently walking among the horses, she inspected them as they did her. Golden light, the silver grey myrrh, had a look at Susie and winked and said, Well, hello, Susie. Look, everyone, she's back again. Hello, Golden Light. I see your coat needs a brush. The ever hungry bay boy roared up and said, Look at me, Susie, over here. I need a brush too, and some food, if you have any to spare. Always thinking of your belly, bay boy. And if you're extra good today, I have a special treat for you. Susie was born with the gift of telepathy. She had a sixth sense much like horses do, and from a very young age, Susie could speak to animals, and they in turn spoke to her. There was a time when she thought everybody could speak to animals, until she was instructed in a dream to keep her gift a secret from others, as people would not accept or understand what she could do. Ark Lowe was a bit of a show-off, and liked to sing and dance. He started to turn this way and that way, with his tail swishing and his ears flicking back and forth. Then he pranced and danced confidently, as if he were on the stage singing an old melody from the war years. It's a long way to Tipperary. That's enough, Arklo. Don't you know any other tunes? said Bayboy. 
Susie smiled. Susie's best friend Jack could see Susie had appeared. When she did, he was always there to assert his authority with the other horses around. Settle down. I'm the boss round here, said Jack, who casually trotted over and stood beside Susie. Hi, Jack. I got an hour today, so not a lot of time. No time to waste, so let's get started. She took a brush and started to brush Golden Light's coat. After a few minutes, she took a nag, as she would call it, in the corner, the little pony, who would keep company of the horses in the evening. She took the nag and gave him some black licorice and sent them out into the paddock. And then she handed the licorice around the other horses, a few pieces to Bay Boy, who screamed for joy. Yippee, my favourite taste! (laughs) <laughs> I'll have some more of that, Susie. Jack got a little bit edgy and said, Well, that's enough, baby boy. Listen, everyone, keep cool. Here comes Luke. A young man in his early twenties walked into the stable. He looked at Susie intently and said, How many stalls have you done? Susie never answered. Jack neighed and said, oh, Listen to him. He thinks he's the boss round here. If I get the chance, I'll belt his backside so hard you won't sit in the saddle for a month. Susie nearly started to laugh. Uh, I'm on the last one, Luke. He stood there and looked around all the other horses, and then he said, How's the bay since you've arrived? You noticed anything strange? Bay boy roared up. Is he talking about me? Susie looked over. (laughs) <laughs> I think he is, bad boy. Maybe he's taken a liking to you all of a sudden. Then Susie walked over to Bay Boy's stall and put on a lead rope. She walked Bay Boy around for a little bit, and then she answered Luke. Oh, he's as hungry as ever. You know what he's like. Always looking for a treat. Other than that, Luke, I can't see a problem with him. Why? Oh, well, the boss wants to give him a run on Saturday week. He's got five of the stable stock here at Fancy Shoe listed for one meeting. What about me? What about me? Ask him, Susie. Ask him. Am I going to have a run? Jack said. Will Tic Tac be racing, Luke? He will be. 1,200 meter sprint, said Luke. (laughs) Piece of carrot cake, said Jack. Suddenly, all of the horses in the stable began to scream out at once. Am I racing? What about me, Susie? Am I going to the track too? Ask him, Susie. Ask him for me. Am I going to the track? Susie clapped her hands aloud and said, Will you all hush up? What's wrong, Susie? Asked Luke. Oh, mosquito, it's been around me since I first came. (laughs) Can you tell me, uh, Luke, what other horses are going to be racing on Saturday? Uh, um, Not... 100% sure yet, but tomorrow morning I'll ride all the horses that are running on the whiteboard inside the feed shed. That way you'll know which horses are to be looking their best, he said. Okay, I'll check that out tomorrow afternoon, came the reply. Luke tossed a set of keys to Susie and he said, "Uh, Listen, Susie, I gotta leave early today. Can you lock up for me tonight? No problems. Yeah. All right. Party time, everyone! When Luke's away, the horses are gonna shake, rattle, and roll, said Bay Boy. All the horses began to throw their two bobs in. Oh, give me a home with a buffalo roam. That's enough, Art Low. Give me a good looking filly, for I'm going silly in this stable. Susie listened to all of the horses and smiled. Luke thought that she was smiling at him. And he looked back at her with this sheepish kind of smile on his face. So he took a comb out of his pocket and started to comb back his thick black hair and said, Susie, uh, do you think my hair looks better brushed back or to the side? Golden Light almost choked with laughter in her stall. (laughs) And she said, Oh, look, you handsome strapper, you. (laughs) Come, let's gallop off together into the setting sun. Just you and me. Jack began to little a little uneasy. Well, 
Listen to me, partner. If you're thinking of moving into my girl, you better think again, for I'll make a cabbage out of your ear if you do. Get it? Got it? Good. So move on, redneck, or I'll kick some curls into that strip black of mop of her on your head. Susie started to laugh. <laughs> oh, look, sometimes you make me laugh. Comb your hair whatever way you like. I don't know. I'm just a schoolgirl. What would I know about that sort of thing? The only thing I know about is horses. They're my only love. Luke was now a little bit embarrassed. And he looked around, up the ceiling and down on the ground, not knowing what to say or where to look. Oh, um, <coughs> okay. Uh, could, could you polish up, uh, polish up some saddles before you go, Susie? Okay, then I'll do that. Luke walked off and seemed to be a little bit in a hurry. The place went into an uproar as he thundered off in his four-wheel drive. With Luke out of the equation, Susie had a chance for a ride. She looked at Jack. He looked at her. And she said, Fancy a lap burback around the track, Jack? Ah, I'd love to. Let's go, came the reply. Susie took a bridle and ran from the tack room and quickly put them on. Then she climbed up on the side of the stall nearby as Jack walked over so that Susie could get on his back. Hold on, Susie, here we go! All the other horses screamed and shouted, Yahoo! Jack took off at speed with Susie on board, who often rode bareback when no one was around. And if ever fate was to play a part in the proceedings, well, it was nigh about to happen for Susie. Every now and then, on a very rare occasion, the horse owner would show up unexpected to view his horses. Susie was having the time of her life racing around the track bareback. At speed, she kept her balance well in the saddle. As Jack hit the track, he was running well, but the wealthy horse owner arrived in his chauffeur-driven Rolls Royce. And as soon as the car was parked, he saw rosy, rosy cheeks, and he felt money, money, money when he seen the gallop of Tic Tac around the track and the jockey on board not knowing who the jockey was. He took his binoculars, got out of the car, and walked over to the railings. Hmm, he thought, that's odd. Too late for track work. He's out riding, tic-tac. He looked close, fixed his eyes on Susie. He was very impressed at her riding ability. Making his way over to the stables, he waited for them to return. And as they did, he stood in front of them, with a stern look on his face, and he said, What on earth do you think you're doing, young lady? Susie replied, uh, Riding bareback on my friend Jack. Why? What's it to you? I'm Anthony O'Brien, the owner of all these horses. You see in the stable here? All the horses started to mutter and splutter, almost at the same time. Oh, look sharp, everyone, it's the boss, said Arklow. Any chance of a few extra slices of bread in the morning, Anthony? said Bay Boy. What about a new warm coat for the winter, Mr. O? said Golden Light. The stables are all a little bit lonely at times, and I'm fed up with horses. Is there any chance of a black Mary goat, or a small white pony, maybe, just for me and my stall, Mr. O'Brien? Hmm, hmm? What do you think? said Jack. Even a fox terrier would be nice for a change, Jack continued. Susie smiled and <clears throat> coughed. <coughs> Sorry, Mr. O'Brien, <clears throat> and I've never actually met you before, but I'm Susie. I work here uh, uh, after school cleaning out the stables and doing odd jobs. Oh, well, you won't be working here anymore after today. Oh, I'm really sorry. Please, don't be mad at me. I, I really love my job here. Don't sack me, said Susie as she jumped off Jack and stood staring up into his eyes. The owner smiled at her and said, Well... As from today, I'd like you to become an apprentice jockey. 
The pay will be much more than you get from mucking out these deals around here. Susie screamed. Are you serious? I've never been as serious in my life. I watched you ride bareback on Tic Tac, and you're a natural. I don't know where you learned to ride like that, but believe you me, I think you've got a gift, and I think you've got a great career ahead of you. So what do you say, hmm? Of course, Mr. O'Brien, I'd, I'd, I'd love to, but I have to talk with Mum and Dad tonight. Can I get back to you? He reached into his wallet and produced a business card. Here, ring me any time, any of these numbers, or send me a text message. There's also my web mail and P.O. box, so oh, I guess I'll be waiting to hear from you, Susie. He looked at Tic Tac and he smiled. Hmm, looks like we've got a promising future there. <laughs> Jack smiled and he said... Uh, well, uh, I could have always told you that, but you never listen. Susie looked at Jack. I can't believe it. After washing out the stalls and sweeping up, she pulled the door to the stable closed and proceeded to lock up all the gates of the sheds and all the doors. There was just enough time to catch the bus out the front, and Susie quickly said good night before she ran at speed to the exit. Her timing was perfect. The bus was just pulling in to the stop. She was home in 20 minutes and couldn't wait to tell her mum and dad what had just happened. After dinner, Susie broke the news to her parents, who were excited and very supportive about the whole thing. The next day, she rang Mr. O'Brien to tell them she would accept his offer. Next day at school, time stood still. Susie couldn't relax. She tried to concentrate on her studies, but it was useless. Finally, the day ended, and she rushed for the bus. When she got off at Fancy Shoe Racetrack, Mr. O'Brien was waiting there for her. Hello, Susie. I have an outfit for you to wear. They're racing silks with my colours, and I hope they all fit. If you need any adjustments, just try them on and let me know. I'll make sure they're adjusted. Oh, thank you. Will I try them on before cleaning out the stables? Well, you're not cleaning today. You're riding. I've got saddles on four of my horses, and I'd like to watch you put them through their paces. I want to see what you can do. Susie was eager to get started. Mr. O'Brien brought her to the jockey's change room, a place Susie had never seen before. When Susie tried on the outfit, it was tailor-made for her. She stepped out proudly, and Mr. O'Brien smiled proudly, and he said, You're absolutely beautiful now. Look at you. Let's go. Get you straight into the saddle. They're all lined up there, waiting for you in the enclosure. And there they were, Arklow, Bayboy, Golden Light, and Jack. Well, take your pick, Susie, and do a lap on the track for each and every one of the horses there, because I need to do some track times. Pick me first, pick me first, said Bayboy. Oh, don't listen to him, Susie, I, I, I'm first, said Arklow. Jack, as always, asserted his authority and said, Not another word from any of you. Come on, Susie, let's put this track on fire. And give O'Brien something to think about. Hmm, okay, sounds good to me, Jack, said Susie. She mounted up and took Jack into the stall at the 1200 metre mark, and she waited for the stall to be released. Suddenly it opened. It was like Jack had been gassed up with nitro. He cut a path on the turf, and at about halfway, Susie said quietly, Okay, Jack, you're doing great. When you're feeling comfortable, change gear. Use that lengthy leap that we've been working on. Jack was really flying, and at the turn Susie said, OK, Jack, push it now, all the way to the post. Mr O'Brien stood there in awe. The gallop was out of this world. And he looked at the time, and sure enough, they had just set a new track record. She brought Jack back to the enclosure and tied him to a post. Looking around at the other three horses, she picked Bay Boy. Come on then, Bay Boy, let's go. One by one, Susie took each of the horses around the track. At the end of the session, Mr. O'Brien was extremely satisfied. OK, Susie, I need your signature and your parents to complete all the forms I'm about to give you. If you can bring them back before the weekend, you'll be riding here on Saturday. Susie, you're going to make a few people sit back and take notice. Are you ready for the big time? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm really ready, Mr. Brand, she said. Saturday came 
and fancy shoe racetrack was starting to fill with people. There were jockeys and horse owners. There were trainers, strappers, bar staff, chefs, cleaners, security guards, television crews, punters and bookmakers, families, other people like Susie's mum and dad who were there as invited guests of the turf club, all there for the day at the races. The first race was about to start. Susie was riding the favourite who was without doubt one of the best sprinters ever seen in years, Tic Tac, who waited along with all the other horses and their riders for the stalls to open. For the very first time in his career, Tic Tac mistimed the jump and came out well behind the other runners. Oh no, I've messed up Susie, whatever will we do? said Jack. Well Jack, it's time to fight back. I want you to think of the worst moment in your life. Was there ever something that happened to you that hurt you so much? Or was there someone or anyone maybe made you feel bad about something you'd done? Oh yeah, a cruel farrier once took me with a hammer. Oh, I felt so frightened. But Mr O'Brien saw him and sacked him on the spot. Okay Jack, it's fight back time. Fight back on the track. I want you to imagine the jockey on the leading horse is that farrier, okay? And if he wins the race, you're going to be long to him for the rest of your life. Suddenly, Jack went into another gear. He went past each horse in the field one by one. At the turn, he went into that huge leap action that really made a difference to the pattern of the race. He was head to head with the front runner, but Jack still had a lot in reserve as he went neck and neck towards the winning post. About a length from the finish, Jack screamed out, Hello, Tic Tac's me name, and fighting back's the game. Nobody's ever going to hammer me, eh? The crowd went wild, and applause and cheering erupted all around the track. Susie had really made an impact at her debut on the track. Everyone had just witnessed one of the greatest efforts ever made by any horse and any jockey on a track. After the race, the winning trophy was presented to the owner and the jockey, who was asked to make a speech. The media were focused on Susie, who thanked Mr O'Brien and all the people who had made this moment possible in her life. Immediately, a star had been born. The entire racing industry had just been treated with one of the greatest riding exhibitions they had seen. They fell in love with her. This was a very special person, they could tell, and rumours were already spreading about one of the greatest jockeys ever to have emerged. All jockeys were now being mounted up for the second race. Mr O'Brien had a quick word with Susie. OK, you really stole the show. Hmm? Knew you would. Anything you do after this is really just for trimmings. I don't expect Bayboy to do anything against this lot. He's never finished better than fifth in his career, so just give him a run, Susie. I'll be happy with that. Susie went over to Bay Boy before she mounted, and she said, Hey, Bay Boy, what's your problem with Mr. O'Brien? <laughs> I don't have a problem. Why? Well, he feeds you, he gives you new shoes, keeps you warm, keeps you dry. And why do you never want to win for him? There's no way you would treat a friend like that. There's no way to show gratitude. Ah, don't talk to me like that, Susie. He's always happy for me to come in fifth or sixth. That's what I'm here, Bayboy said. Hmm, Susie thought for a moment. I get it. So you're just doing what you think he wants you to do. So you think you're keeping him happy, eh? Yeah, that's right, Susie, he replied. Well, if you want to take my advice, show him for once what kind of horse you really are and leave this field behind in your wake. Would that make him happy? You could almost feel the electricity cut through the air. Oh, he would be so proud of you, bay boy. Really? So, you'd like me to win then, eh? Susie patted bay boy softly on his head and said, Yes, he would. But he doesn't think you've got what it takes. Bay boy was starting to fire up now. Okay, Susie, I'm going to change his mind about how he feels. (laughs) Let's go. Bayboy anticipated when the stalls would open and went straight to the front of the field. There was an immediate challenge for him. One of the favoured runners came alongside and had a good eyeball across at Bayboy. Hi, Bayboy. You're never usually up front. What's happening? Ah, it's all about Pete, 
Me. Me today. My pride. My dignity. My owner. He thinks I'm a no-hooper, and I'm going to prove to him I'm not. The other horse took a deep breath and went past Bay Boy, saying, I think you're a bit out of your league here in this company. See you around. <laughs> the tracks, maybe. Okay, Bay Boy, settle in your running and let him go. He's already spent his energy, said Susie. He'll fall back soon, and then you can pass him at the turn. And sure enough, as they rounded the turn, the leading horse began to shorten stride. Now's the time to show them who you really are, Bay Boy. Go, my fine four-legged friend. Bay Boy went past the leader as if he was standing still. On the way past Bay Boy, looked over and said, Horses like you can eat my dust. <laughs> I'll be seeing you around. Bay Boy kicked and went further ahead. With the winning post in sight, the only battle left now was who would come in second and third. Bay Boy had hammered the field, winning easily. Mr. O'Brien was speechless. He stood in the stands and then raced over to the winning enclosure. And he said, Susie, I don't know what you did on his back, but that horse is not the Bay Boy that I've come to know. I've just seen a champion emerge from the pack, Susie. I must say, you have some gift. You've just given me the biggest thrill of my life. I was so proud of Bay Boy out there today. Oh, thank you so much. I don't have another runner in the next race, so have a break and I'll see you in about an hour. You'll be riding Golden Lights race. Susie jumped off Bay Boy and looked up into the crowd. She saw her mum and dad waving from the members stand. She could tell how happy they looked. She took off her riding hat and threw it up in the air. Then she blew a big kiss to them both. Caught her hat. As they draped the winning rug and sash around Bay Boy, Susie held on to the bridle and said, See, I told you. He's so proud of you. Wow, Susie, that felt so good. Susie spent her break talking to Golden Light in the stall. With momentum on her side, it was basically all over before the race started. The stable were on fire. Golden Light was sent out a red-hot favourite, and when it was time for the race to start, most punters just watched on. Susie could sense Golden Light was not going to lose the race, and as they went to the starting gates, she said, OK, I'm just here for the ride. The stalls opened up, and away they went. Golden Light took a sit three back on the outside of the field. At the turn, she went to the front and accelerated well ahead. It was a no-contest race. Before the next race, our close race, Mr. O'Brien had a quick word with Susie. I need you to do something, a special favour for me, Susie, in this race. I want you to bring Arklo in third. Third? Okay, Mr. O'Brien, no problem. Before Susie mounted on Arklo, she took the bridle and shared a special moment with the horse. There's no doubt that you're the best horse in the field, Arklo, but I've been given a special task to ask, and I need you to help me. We have to come in third. Arklo rubbed his head softly on Susie's face and said, Oh, sure. I've done that before. <laughs> Not a problem. Third, hmm? Okay. When they do that, I'm actually um, going faster, I guess, sometimes. And then they pull me back, and I pull back on them. And sometimes, Susie, you know what? <laughs> I nearly pull their arms out of their sockets. <laughs> I mean, who do they think they are? I'm bred to win. <laughs> Nobody pulls me up, so mm, thanks for asking, Susie. I appreciate you saying that. So before the jump, no problem. I'll come in third. No, you don't need to hold me up. I'll just, I'll just go at a three-quarter pace, maybe half pace. Susie replied, "Yeah, yeah, but third, third with dignity, Arklo. So this is what I plan: we'll miss the jump, like we'll travel maybe five lengths behind the last horse, and that way you'll have a lot of ground to make up. Hmm? It's going to look good. Trust me. You'll really have to be on the pace after that, though." Oh, okay then, fine. We'll give them a sight. They'll not forget in a hurry. <laughs> they were all in behind the starting gates. And as the starting gates opened, Arkel came out. Last, well last, roaring up in the air. To the looker-on, he seemed well out of commission in the race. Susie sat quietly in the saddle, and she said, 
Right, okay, that looked really good. Now, what I need you to do is close your eyes and think there's only one horse ahead of you in the race. Trust me and follow my guide. Oh, I like challenges. <laughs> Running blindfolded is great. <laughs> this is fantastic. Are your eyes closed? They are. Good, Arglow. The horse in front of us is half a mile ahead of you. There's no other way to go but down the extreme outside, and it's all downhill after that. Arklow did as he was instructed, because he had complete trust in Susie and her ability. But the truth of Arklow's run was such a miraculous ride, never before seen on the track. Susie pushed Arklow through the field, weaving in and out between runners and the fence, it was a nightmare of a ride for a jockey. Pushing the horse through needle-eye openings, scraping paint off the fence as they went, making spaces in the field where none existed, placing him, Arklow, in striking distance, just at the turn of the race. Never before did a rider take as many chances as Susie had just done. How far ahead is the leader now, Susie? Oh, you still a far away to go off the pace, came the reply. So how far is there to go? Oh, I can't say. Mm, maybe a quarter mile. In fact, the race was over, and Arklow was in a photo finish for third. Susie let Arklow do a lap of honour as she waited for the result of the photo. The judge finally made the decision, and it went in Arklow's favour. How far, how far is the leader ahead now, Arklow? You've caught up and the race is over. So where did I end up? Where we wanted, in third place. Oh, really? Oh, fantastic! Everyone was astounded at Arklow's run. It was a truly amazing effort. Mr. O'Brien was in the enclosure waiting for the return. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I would never have believed that run. It was absolutely unbelievable. The thing is humility, Susie. That what that race was all about. I mean, we're not meant to be perfect. There's got to be an imperfection in everything we do. So I think three wins out of four probably is much, much more in keeping with being human, don't you? And it's not such a bad effort at the end of the day. The end.